Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'll be doing my trade targets for round four, going through how or what, reacting almost to what the community are saying and doing with their ins and outs, and sort of adding my um, two cents, I guess, to it. So before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into this video. So Harvey Thomas is the number one guy. We went through this in the cash cow segment, so I will kind of skirt over it and not um, sort of not uh, put it in. Um, then we go to the second top at 6.4K, and for reference, Harvey Thomas is currently 7.8K in. So when you look at this on Friday or Saturday, and you or f sorry Thursday night, and you see Harvey Thomas is seven or something like 20K, 20K trade in then you'll understand why this was, um, why he was so lowly traded in at the moment because they generally, st people start to confirm their trades or put them into the system on Thursday or so on the Wednesday evening. And this is uh, filmed on the Tuesday evening. So that's why there is some um, difference in them. Um, Tom Powell as well, 6.4K trade in. So yeah, I generally think this is the best uh, guy to target this week. I know Flanders will probably be in and around the market. I reckon Flanders, um, if Harvey, if Tom Powell hits, Harvey Thomas is going to hit 30k trade in, I reckon. Tom Powell's probably going to hit 20k trade in. I reckon Sam Flanders will hit about 15. So that's sort of my order of how they're going to go. And I think Oli Dempsey is around about that 13, uh, probably 13k. I don't think it'll be as much as Flanders or Powell, as I think some people will start to think about different things, etc., and not jump on Dempsey as much um, because they'll get scared of him being labeled a rookie and 420k. Um, so that's sort of what I generally mean by that. Um, so yeah, Tom Powell, I think he is the one to pick. 98 average has shown that he can score without, uh, well, he did goal in the end has shown that he can score basically without goaling. I mean, that would have been a 97 if he hadn't goaled, and that and the score before would have been a 101 without a goal. So yeah, he's shown that he can do it without those goals, and has shown to be pretty consistent kick handball-wise. And I reckon Jai Simpkins' role, they actually like him more as a half-forward pushing up, um, and Tom Powell on the ball. He does have um, Brisbane this week at Brisbane, is it? Yeah, no, at Norwood, sorry. So a smaller ground, contested player, should do really well. So I'm, I, I like the look of that trade as well. Um, next up, Ollie Dempsey, we sort of went through that in the um, cash cow segment, so I will leave that out. Um, then we go to Sam Flanders, 3.9K traded in at the moment. Um, a guy I'm looking at, I just think with the moment, um, round four against GWS, I'm, I don't think that's probably the greatest matchup for him. Um, someone's probably going to prove me otherwise, but I think in the next couple weeks, he is one that you can target. I'm probably going to target him for, honestly, the Sydney game. I know it sounds bad, Sydney, but he generally could run amok against us, um, as I think they'll go and try and tag a Noah Anderson or something like that. It's harder to tag uh, um, Sam Flanders as much, and he seems to be getting a lot of the ball out of the back of the contest, and Sydney aren't the best clearance team. So um, the way Gold Coast like to operate, they like to get the clearance back behind the play, and Sam Flanders seems to be that guy as well that's doing that, um, being that first handball received outside of the outside of the clearance. So I really like that against the Swans that he could potentially run a muck on us, um, sadly. And then he has Eagles, Brisbane North. So that is probably an actual positive run for him in six, seven, eight, nine. Even though it, it looks two tough games, two easy games. So that's sort of my targeting with Sam Flanders. And I don't think at 844K, given his break even and how our mid prices are operating, e.g. Uh, Bonner or uh, someone else, I don't think he's going to get too far away from us. So I reckon we can target him around then. And he also has the mid forward status, which helps a lot. Um, Harvey Gallagher, we went through in the rookie, um, in the cash cow, sorry. Uh, Tom Green, 2.2K. I think this and 12 traded it out for some dumb reason. Um, obviously, you're going to get some traded people trading these guys out for some reason. Uh, but yeah, Tom Green, um, I don't mind it, but I don't think people are... The, the thing is, how are you getting to Tom Green is the real question. Are you trading just a, I don't know, a, maybe a Butters or something like that, or some Newcomb, I could understand you doing Newcomb to Tom Green if you can stomach it. 
um, but it's very hard given that 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 gap is about 300k and 300k with um, a rookie is probably going to be one of the top price rookies. Remember that Sanders and McKercher and Roberts are in that 400, 500k bracket. You're going to have to be subbing one of those guys out or training one of those guys out to get up to Tom Green with Newcomb. So it depends who you're doing it with, and it, generally it's hard to see who can who you can do it with that isn't actually performing. Because I wouldn't be doing a bond to green trade at the moment. That's just delaying upgrade season for you as you're not getting the cash gen you need actually at the moment. So um, I can understand people chasing the points, but I generally think this is um, chasing the points at the moment. And this is one of those sort of rookie errors that you can make. Yes, Tom Green will score well, but you can cover that by... Um, and the difference here is, I'll say it right now, is that um, mathematically it makes more sense to not do this than to actually do it. And that's just because you get upgrade season one week earlier and you start to get 40 to 50 to 60 points better, as well as potentially you have to drop one of your best rec rookies to do this. So you're missing out on cash generation there as well. So you're really stalling yourself about 150K probably in cash generation and 40 to 50 points probably to get this and is Tom Green really going to outscore potentially Bont by a lot of points I don't think it will so in the end you're burning yourself probably 50 to 60 points overall I reckon doing a trade like this and yes a lot of people will be like okay yep yeah. but what's the what about and what and that is going Bont and sorry that is Tom Green going at 127 what about if Tom Green regresses a little bit because he's had two easier matchups um, and went 116 in round one against Collingwood what about if he goes against the Suns and goes a 115? Then he's going to slightly regress. A 115, he, his break even starts to turn on him. I reckon I can get him around round um, sorry 13 for about 950k. So yeah, I'm not too worried about Tom Green. Um, ba -ba -ba, Josh Draper, we talked about rookies. Riley Bonner, I talked about in sort of the, the cash cows, whatever. Um, I don't think he's going to be that good of a trade in just because he is a massive... Um, uh, omission, I should say, um, at the trade uh, at the selection table. So I don't reckon he's a good trade in. Elliot Yo understand this as well. I think he's a decent trade in. I that's why I started him because there was risk of injury, but I knew that he could pop something like this. And yeah, I've been really happy. Round one, I was really annoyed that he scored a seventy, but I understood why he scored the seventy, and I was really happy that I held. And now he, I mean, he's forty one percent owned, but. He's looking good and will be potentially one of the luxury trades at the way that this is going. But let's just hold our fingers crossed that he survives. Um, Nick Martin, he's going well. I'm happy that I held there. Um, I'm happy that I had other spot fires because, yeah, his 145 was absolutely huge and wish I'd held in Supercoach. Um, as you'll see, the Supercoach side was uh, kind of crazy uh, when we look at it in um, on Thursday. But, yeah, Nick Martin did his job. Um, Isaac Heaney, I... Almost want to say, don't do this, because the problem with this Isaac Heaney trade is, and I'll put it simply for you guys, if Isaac Heaney goes 150, and, and this is how you understand what I'm meaning about this, Isaac Heaney goes 150 against the Eagles, is a possibility, right? Is a possibility. Then in week five, when he comes out of, when he goes into his buy, your covering score for him is going to be a 60. So that is one. That is two hundred and ten across two weeks that you've got out of Isaac Heaney. He's that's one hundred five. I can tell you right now there will be someone that goes above one hundred five, and at his price at nine eleven k, I think it is. Not sorry, nine twelve k. One k off. Um, I reckon there'll be someone else that goes better. You've got a Flanders who could legitimately do, who's probably a better trade in than um, is definitely a better trade in than Heaney, who will do. Um, sort of around about that, I reckon. One he could, Anders could go one ten across two weeks, beat out Heaney, and one ten for Flanders is more in the range of, is sorry less optimistic, and more pessimistic than Heaney going one fifty and getting a covering sixty score. So that's sort of my thoughts around that is just the level of um, probability of what Heaney does to just beat out or to tie with a Flanders 105 both weeks, it is so low. It would be, I think, his career high score for him to get like a 150 or something. So it just shows you that I don't think it's possible. Or it is possible, I think, 
given the way he scores, that he can do that, go 150. But it is so, so tough. And you need the right set of conditions and whatnot and everything for him to go 150. So, yeah, I would just stay clear of that as it's more than likely that Heaney just goes 130 and a covering 60 score, and then you just need a 95 from Flanders, which he's averaging 99 to cover off Heaney, and there you go. Um, Steele, understand this trade, and he's been going really well, and Steele could, and let's look at this, Steele for 23 more K, puts up 117 each week. Steele for 17K puts up, uh, sorry, for 23K, puts up 117 each week, that covers off Heaney, probably for, I would say, say we do it, increase the covering score to a 70. That's 234 for steel. 70 covering score means that Heaney, to cover off steel getting his average, needs to go 164. That's not what he's going to do. So that is why I don't think Heaney is a good trade-in at the moment. Harry Sheasel, understand this as well. He, he's been on fire. Uh, Mitchell, I think this is a lot of people not necessarily knowing, knowing the makeup of the Swans, and it does depend on the um, Taylor Adams, which might come out, out at six. Um, let's just check Taylor Adams just to see if nothing's popped up recently. Um, but yeah, I am. Uh, we'll wait and see on Taylor Adams, I guess. Um, he is, um, that probably comes out in an hour or so, that um, suspension potential. But if he isn't playing, if he isn't suspended, Caleb Mitchell doesn't play. It's as simple as that. You've also got Weeks returning as well, Harry Cunningham returning, and I don't think Dane Rampey will just return. Uh, they could honestly, knowing them, they could just play, they could just replace um, Dane Rampey with Harry Cunningham and just play the two tools. But I don't think they will. Um, just because I'm saying that just because it's the Eagles but I do think they'll go generally three tools because they always do that in case one tool goes down um, so yeah we'll see um, but if they do go two tools it probably means Blakey goes tall and probably almost helps out um, a little bit of uh, Matty Roberts um, actually off half back because he will be the genuine number one ball user I reckon so uh, watch that space around the selection here uh, and Taylor Adams suspension um from the injury report, Luke Parker still Luke Parker and Angus Sheldrick return after the bye. So Caleb Mitchell isn't surviving after the bye. Um, as they'll probably want Sheldrick over Mitchell, to be honest with you. But they may play Sheldrick in a in a um, they may play Sheldrick in the uh, VFL for a couple of weeks, so that may help Mitchell survive. But then again, also um, Mitchell post bye with Adams coming back, hundred percent coming back. He won't survive. Gorn, understand that. Whitfield, understand that as well. Massimo D'Ambrosio, understand that as well. He he got a 60 in the wettest conditions ever, and he wasn't even used that much. So he could have easily, um, and he could have easily almost gotten himself to a uh, sort of, I don't know if my, um, I just saw my CPU. I don't know whether this recording will um, last. But yeah, Massimo D'Ambrosio could easily score really, really well on um, next week as he's got Collingwood. It is a small ground. Um, they're playing at, I believe, oh, they're slow. Um, where are they playing? They are playing at Adelaide Oval, so it's a bigger a bigger ground compared to like Norwood, etc. But um, yeah, he may struggle a little bit on Nor uh, on Adelaide Oval against Collingwood. But then again, we'll wait and see on that one because they just need to get it in him and aim on hands, to be honest with you. Um, Clark, uh, Keane, Clark, Zorko. I don't want to make this play just yet. Um, and then we go to the outs, and I just want to see who uh, people are trading out. James Jordan, understand that. We don't know whether he's even going to survive the cup at this point. There is a potential for him to get dropped. Um, I don't think he probably gets dropped just yet. I think they need Parker and potentially Sheldrick or whatnot not to um, drop James Jordan. Um, Nat Fife, I understand to a certain degree why this is happening, but I also think that he is doing just fine, averaging 70 in the midfield or whatever. So yeah, um, break even 56. I mean, the cash gen isn't really necessarily there anymore. So I understand also why that is the case. Zach Fisher, I don't understand why people are trading him out just yet. I think you'd have other spot fires, to be honest with you. And he could easily turn out in the 85 next week or in what happened with Martin, etc. Um, where they're not going terribly badly, but they're not going terribly well. You trade them out because you want better, and then that player, because of the role that they have, absolutely goes uh, nuts, and that's the reason why I'd be holding Zach Fisher. Sexton, understand this just because of the role change. A lot of us got out of it at the buy, but I can understand why people are trading out of him now. Billings had a stinker. Cash Gen, go on, understand that. Darcy Wilson, Cash Gen, probably stunted. 
I'm more on the forgiving side with rookies like this at the moment. Um, given the scenario with Jordan and Billings, that might give away a little bit. Um, and just looking at the future for it. And I think that Wilson can regain his uh, cash generation. If you just look at this, averaging a 50, he's still making, what's that, 32, 56K over the next three weeks, averaging a 50. And I think he's got a big score in him. Um, so yeah, that's why I'd be keeping him. And I'm just sort of waiting for another rookie to pop up at 220K to get rid of him because he is only, what, 338? Um, so he is quite hard to shift on if you wanted to at that price. Um, Caulfield and Reed. understand Caulfield obviously injured. Um, Reed, I reckon he's going to drop through the floor at this point. Um, we saw in the rookies, still 82.08. I reckon he's going to drop probably to 80% owned um, after this week. And then next week and the week after, he's going to start plummeting through the floor as he's nor, he's sort of almost that first one that you get um, trade out for um, as he's over at, he, he's not really scoring, but his price is inflated up towards that 370k range, 362k. So he's going to start um, really stalling out cash and rise if he doesn't get another good score, as you can see here. So I understand that bond. I don't understand this, to be honest with you, unless people are worried that he's injured. Uh, 2.1k trade outs. I think this is people points chasing, to be honest with you, um, and swapping to green, which will just in the long run, I think, especially if Bond can get back to his best and get that midfield time where he goes 110 again, then you can, um, and green regresses. If one of those two events occur, then this is a pointless trade. And if both of them occur, occur then you're basically trading, seven. you're basically using up 70k to get the same output and potentially stalling out your cash generation for it so you may end up wasting like 150k by going bond to um green in essence how's um salem windsor jai nukem all understand these trades i think marty Hoare also is going to be up here in the end um and then we saw wines at 1.4k to start i believe and yeah that'll rise up to 30k because people are going to realize that he's actually out for the round so that pretty much is the video i hope it wasn't corrupted because that would be annoying um, and I'd have to redo it, but hopefully it isn't. And I guess I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the, um, the team reveals for AFL Fantasy and Supercoach for round four, as well as my tips. So I will see you, oh, so I will see you guys in those videos on Thursday. Bye guys.